Welcome to Home Library Book Review, where we select a book right from the shelf and explain its learning through easy to understand text, graphics, examples, and animation, along with discussion with family members. Today, I'm joined with my son Arnav. Hey everyone! Today, we will be reviewing How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a classic self-help book. It was published in 1936. The principles in this book will help you to achieve your maximum potential even in today's complex and competitive modern age. To be able to cover maximum principles from this book, we have divided this review into four parts and this is part one out of four and it has Goodreads rating of 4.2. Dale Carnegie was an American writer and lecturer and the developer of famous courses in self-improvement, salesmanship, corporate training, public speaking and interpersonal skills. Born in poverty on a farm in Missouri. He was the author of How to Win Friends and Influence People, first published in 1936, a massive bestseller and remains popular today. He also wrote a biography of Abraham Lincoln titled Lincoln the Unknown as well as several other books. Part 1. Fundamental techniques in handling people. Before we move further and look into each principles, Arnav, what do you understand by handling people? That, I think handling people means managing people. That's correct. It could also be approaching people, caring people, or administering people, or even dealing with people. So what do you say? Shall we get started? Yeah! Principle 1. Don't criticize, condemn or complain. Criticism is futile because it puts a person on the defensive and usually makes him or her strive to justify himself or herself. Dad, what is criticism? It is an expression of disapproval of someone or something on the basis of perceived faults or mistake. Criticism is dangerous because it wounds a person's precious pride, hurts his sense of importance and arouses resentment. When dealing with people, let us remember we are not dealing with creatures of logic. We are dealing with creatures of emotions, creatures bristling with prejudice and motivated by pride and vanity. You see, any fool can criticize, condemn and complain, and most fools do. But it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Instead of condemning people, let's try to understand them. Let's try to figure out why they do what they do. Now that's a lot more profitable and intriguing than criticism and it breeds sympathy, tolerance and kindness. Principle 2. Give honest and sincere appreciation. There is only one way to get anybody to do anything and that is by making the other person want to do it. The desire for a feeling of importance is one of the chief distinguishing differences between mankind and the animals. Dad, what is feeling of importance? Everyone has an innate feeling to be of some virtue or some significance and this creates a desire for feeling of importance. 
we can create this feeling of importance in other person by giving honest and sincere appreciation but we should also be cautious of the fact that the appreciation has to be honest and sincere and not flattery flattery is temporary but honest and sincere appreciation will go a long way principle 3 arouse in other person an eager want why talk about what we want because the only person interested in what we want is only ourselves now to be able to influence other people is to talk about what they want and show them how to get it now by asking the right questions to know about what other people want we not only understand other people's point of view but also we see things from a different angle looking at other person's point of view and arousing them an eager want for something is not to be construed as manipulation and then by fulfilling this eager want we not only win the trust of the person but also win a long term association let us summarize the principles we have learned so far in part 1 fundamental techniques in handling people principle 1 don't criticize condemn or complain principle 2 give honest and sincere appreciation principle 3 arouse in other person an eager want and this is part 2 out of 4 part 2 six ways to make people like you before we move ahead arnav what do you understand by to make people like you that to make people like me i think i'd like them yes that's right it could also mean that people can adore you it can also mean that people love your company it can also mean people enjoy your company and also it could mean that they are comfortable being around you i can't wait to see the principles in this edition so shall we get started yeah principle 1 become genuinely interested in other people in today's world it is important to have good communication with your friends family colleagues and relatives and to be able to do that you need to be genuinely interested in their interests if you want to make friends let's put ourselves out to do things for other people things that require time energy unselfishness and thoughtfulness if you want to make friends Let's greet people with animation and enthusiasm. Showing a genuine interest in others not only wins friends for you but also develops relations for a long time. Principle 2: Smile. Smile costs nothing but creates much. It enriches those who receive without impoverishing those who give. it happens in a flash and the memory of it sometimes lasts forever none are so rich they can get along without it and none so poor but are richer for its benefits it creates happiness in the home fosters goodwill in a business and is the counter sign of friends it is dressed to the weary daylight to the discouraged 
sunshine to the sad and nature's best antidote fee trouble yet it cannot be bought begged borrowed or stolen for it is something that is no earthly good to anybody till it is given away principle 3 remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language we should be aware of the magic contained in a name and realize that this single item is wholly and completely owned by the person with whom we are dealing and nobody else the name sets the individual apart it makes him or her unique among all others the information we are imparting or the request we are making takes on a special importance when we approach the situation with the name of the individual from the waitress to a senior executive the name will work magic as we deal with others arnav now can you please tell us about some principles from this book Okay dad Principle 4 Be a good listener Encourage others to talk about themselves If you aspire to be a good conversationalist be an attentive listener to be interesting be interested Ask questions that other persons will enjoy answering encourage them to talk about themselves and their accomplishments remember that the people you are talking to are a hundred times more interested in themselves and their wants and problems than they are in you and your problems principle 5 talk in terms of the other person's interest Everyone likes to talk on the topic of their interest. By listening carefully, we can understand the topic the other person's interest is. And if we bring up those topics in a conversation along with our genuine interest, then we can gather other person's attention almost immediately. This is a valuable technique which we can use in business and everyday life. Thank you, Arnav. Principle six: Make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. Instead of pointing out the negatives in other person, we should always bring out the positives that we observe. We should make other person feel comfortable. and also valuable talk to people about themselves and they will listen for hours the life of many a person would probably be changed if only someone would make him or her feel important this can help you build long term relationships not only in business but also within your friend circle family and relatives let's summarize what we have learned so far part 2 six ways to make people like you principle 1 become genuinely interested in other people principle 2 smile principle 3 remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language principle 4 be a good listener encourage others to talk about themselves principle 5 talk in terms of the other person's interests principle 6 make the other person feel important and do it sincerely and this is part 3 out of 4 part 3 how to win people to your way of thinking so arnav what do you think by way of thinking dad 
I think it means my thought process. Yes, it could also mean your ideas. It could be the context. It could also be the subject and also it could mean alignment of your thoughts. So Arnav, shall we get started? Yeah. Principle 1. The only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it. We should always welcome the disagreement, which is the cause of any argument. We should understand why the other person is not agreeing with us. We should also distrust our first instinct impression and try to look beyond and understand why there is a disagreement. We should also control our temper and remember that we want to solve this amicably. Now we need to listen first what the other person has to say, understand and then speak our subject. And that is how we should be able to end any disagreement and get out of the habit of getting into any kind of an argument. Principle 2. Show respect for the other person's opinions. Never say you're wrong. Even though if we know the other person is wrong, we should never say that upfront. We should always give other person to explain his or her thought process and understand why one person is saying something, what he means out of that. And only after understanding the entire context, we should then give our opinion. We should always show respect to other person's opinion and let other person describe what they want to. Principle 3. If you're wrong, admit it quickly and empathetically. Any fool can try to defend his or her mistakes, and most fools do, but it raises one above the herd and gives one a feeling of nobility and exultation to admit one's mistake. So next time if you're wrong, admit it quickly with empathy. Principle 4. Begin in a friendly way. The use of gentleness and friendliness is demonstrated day after day by people who have learned that a drop of honey catches more flies than a gallon of gall. Therefore, it's imperative that we always begin in a friendly way. Principle 5. Get the other person saying yes, yes immediately. In talking with people, don't begin by discussing the things on which you differ. Begin by emphasizing and keep on emphasizing the things on which you agree. Keep emphasizing if possible that you are both striving for the same end and that your only difference is one method and not of purpose. A skillful speaker gets on the outset a number of yes responses. The set of psychological process of the listeners moving in the affirmative direction. It is like the movement of a billiard ball propel in one direction and it takes same force to deflect it far more force to send it back in the opposite direction. Principle 6. Let the other person do a great deal of the talking. Most people trying to win others to their way of thinking and do too much talking themselves. Let the other person talk themselves out. They know more about their business and problems than you do. So ask them questions. Let them tell you a few things. If you disagree with them, you may be tempted to interrupt, but don't. It is dangerous. 
they won't pay attention to you while they still have a lot of ideas of their own crying for expression so listen patiently and with an open mind be sincere about it encourage them to express their ideas fully principle 7 let the other person feel that the idea is his or her don't you have much more faith in ideas than you discover for yourself than in ideas that are handed to you on a silver platter if so isn't it bad judgment to try to ram your opinions down the throat of other people isn't it wiser to make suggestions and let other person think out the conclusion by doing so we can make the other person agree to our terms sooner than late allow that person to take the center stage while all the ideas are yours and you know how to control your conversation principle 8 try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view remember that other people may be totally wrong but they don't think so don't condemn them any fool can do that try to understand them only wise tolerant exceptional people even try to do that there is a reason why the other man thinks and acts as he does ferret out the reason and you have the key to his actions perhaps to his personality try honestly to put yourself in his place if you say to yourself how would i feel how would i react if i were in his shoes you will save yourself time and irritation for by becoming interested in the cause we are less likely to dislike the effects and in addition you will sharply increase your skills in human relationship 9 be sympathetic with the other person's ideas and desires wouldn't you like to have a magic phrase that would stop all arguments eliminate ill feelings create goodwill and make the other person listen attentively I don't blame you one iota for feeling as you do. If I were you, an answer like that will soften the most cantankerous old cuss alive. And you can say that and be 100% sincere. Because if you were the other person, you of course would feel just as he does. Principle 10 appeal to the nobler motive we all have disagreements conflicts and arguments just stop yourself in this moment and think why are you having this disagreements or conflict in the first place do we really need to continue our arguments or perhaps find an amicable way to resolve think about what you want to achieve by the end of the day if it is harmony and peace then those are the nobler motives one should aim for principle 11 dramatize your ideas this is the day of dramatization merely stating a truth isn't enough the truth has to be made vivid interesting and you have to use showmanship the movies do it television does it principle 12 throw down a challenge every successful person loves the game every successful person also loves the chance for self expression the chance to prove his or her worth to excel and to win and that is the reason we should throw down a challenge when nothing else works we should try this let's summarize what we have learned so far part 3 
how to win people to your way of thinking principle 1 the only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it principle 2 show respect for the other person's opinions never say you're wrong principle 3 if you're wrong admit it quickly and empathetically principle 4 begin in a friendly way principle 5 get the other person saying yes yes immediately principle 6 let the other person do a great deal of the talking principle 7 let the other person feel that the idea is his or hers principle 8 try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view principle 9 be sympathetic with the other person's ideas and desires principle 10 appeal to the nobler motives principle 11 dramatize your ideas and finally principle 12 throw down a challenge This is part 4 of 4. Part 4 Be a leader. Before we begin Arnav, what do you think is a leader? Dad, I think leader means a chief. Yes, it could also mean a commander. It could also mean a director. or a head or even a ruler i can't wait reviewing these principles what about you me too dad let's get started principle 1 begin with praise and honest appreciation Being a leader you understand the importance of getting a work done associated with a task but the same understanding may or may not be with the workers for a worker he or she may have several tasks to be done in a day and your task may or may not be their priority so as a leader how do you get the work done and make it effective for the worker to understand the importance of that particular task the best way to do that is to begin with praise or an honest appreciation this could be anything somebody coming to office on time somebody getting to a meetings early somebody making a notes when you notice and observe these traits in a person you can use them as honest appreciation and once by doing this when you catch their attention you can always tell them that while i appreciate the other traits that you have but let me tell you i do not like the way you're handling this work it's taking a lot of time and it is going to impact the task and by further giving them meaningful insights you can expect to get the work done therefore by beginning with a praise and giving an honest appreciation of the traits that you like about a person you not only got the attention of that person but also got the work done principle 2 call attention to people's mistake indirectly calling attention to one's mistakes indirectly works wonders with sensitive people who may resent bitterly any direct criticism Many people begin their criticism with sincere praise followed by the word but and ending with a critical statement. For example, in trying to change a child's careless attitude towards studies, we might say, "We are really proud of you, Johnny, for raising your grades this term, but if you had worked harder on your algebra, the results would have been better." In this case Johnny might feel encouraged until he heard the word but he might then question the sincerity 
of the original praise. To him, the praise seemed only to be a contrived, led into a critical interference of failure. Credibility would be strained, and we would probably not achieve our objectives of changing Johnny's attitude towards studies. Now, this could be easily overcome by changing the word but to and. Something like, we are really proud of you, Johnny, for raising your grades this term and by continuing the same conscious effort next term your algebra grades can be up with all the others now johnny would accept the praise because there was no follow-up of an interfere of failure we have called his attention to the behavior we wish to change indirectly and the chances are he will try to live up to our expectations Principle 3. Talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. Admitting one's own mistakes, even when one hasn't corrected them, can help convince somebody to change his or her behavior. Actually, it isn't nearly so difficult to listen to a recital of your faults if the person criticizing you begins by humbly admitting that he too is far from impeccable. This generally implies that everyone makes mistakes and making mistakes is common than rare. In this way, a leader can conclude that we all make mistakes, but now we need to learn from these mistakes and improve going forward. Principle 4. Ask questions instead of giving direct orders. Let's be honest about it. No one likes to take orders. Instead of giving direct orders, we can always ask questions. Something like, what do you think of this? Such questions will always offer an opportunity to people to be a part of the process. A technique like that makes it easy for a person to correct errors. A technique like that saves a person's pride and gives him or her a feeling of importance. It encourages cooperation instead of rebellion. Actually, resentment caused by a brash order may last a long time, even if the order was given to correct an obviously bad situation. A leader, instead of giving direct orders, could make the team participate by asking, how would we have handled it differently? Asking questions not only makes an order more palatable, it often stimulates the creativity of the persons whom you ask. People are more likely to accept an order if they have had a part in the decision that caused the order to be issued. Principle 5. Let the other person save faith. Letting one save face how important, how vitally important that is, and how few of us ever stop to think of it. We ride roughshod over the feelings of others, getting our own way, finding fault, issuing threats, criticizing a child or an employee in front of others without even considering the hurt to the other person's pride. Whereas a few minutes thought, a considerate word or two, a genuine understanding of the other person's attitude would go so far forward. Even if we are right and the other person is definitely wrong, we only destroy ego by causing someone to lose face. Therefore, let's remember if we are ever 
to be faced with such a distasteful necessity then we should do it as discreet as possible and let the other person save face principle 6 praise the slightest improvement and praise every improvement praise is like sunlight to the warm human spirit we cannot flower and grow without it and yet while most of us are only too ready to apply to others the cold wind of criticism we are somehow reluctant to give our fellow the warm sunshine of praise everybody likes to be praised but when praise is specific it comes across as sincere not something the other person may be saying just to make one feel good remember we all crave appreciation and recognition and will do almost anything to get it but nobody wants insincerity nobody wants flattery while praising someone we need to be specific and genuine in our approach there should be no exaggeration whatsoever abilities wither under criticism they blossom under encouragement to become a more effective leader of people we should always apply to praise the slightest improvement and praise every improvement we should be hearty in our approbation and lavish in our praise principle 7 give the other person a fine reputation to live up to what do you do when a person who has been a good worker begins to turn in shoddy work you can replace that person with someone else but that really doesn't solve anything instead a leader should always talk heart to heart with that person tell that person of his or her own achievements in his or her own line of work compliment and tell that person if that person is here for a number of years then that person must be providing a good level of service and also make him or her aware that currently the level of service is not as per the expectation that the person has made for himself or herself in this way a leader can give other person a fine reputation to live up to and expect the work to get better principle 8 use encouragement make the fault seem easy to correct tell your child your spouse or your employee that he or she is stupid or dumb at a certain thing has no gift for it and is doing it all wrong and you have destroyed almost every incentive to try to improve but if you use the opposite technique be liberal with your encouragement make the thing seem easy to do let the other person know that you have faith in his ability to do it and he has an undeveloped flair for it and he will practice until the dawn comes in the window in order to excel then you will not only win a person's trust but also see him or her improving and excelling in their line of work if you want to help others to improve remember to use encouragement make the fault seem easy to principle 9 make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest an effective leader should be able to put forth his or her suggestions to other person 
and make them work on it happily. And this can be achieved by following these guidelines. Number one, be sincere. Do not promise anything that you cannot deliver. Forget about the benefits to yourself and concentrate on the benefits to the other person. Number two, know exactly what it is you want the other person to do. Number three, be empathetic. Ask yourself what is it the other person really want. Number four, consider the benefits that person will receive from doing what you suggest. Number five, match those benefits to the other person's wants. And finally, number six, when you make your request, put it in a form that will convey to the other person the idea that he personally will benefit. It is naive to believe you will always get a favorable reaction from other persons when you use these guidelines. But the experience of most people shows that you are more likely to change attitudes this way than by not using these guidelines. And let's say if you increase your success by even a mere 10%, you have become 10% more effective as a leader than you were before and that is your own benefit. Let's summarize what we have learned so far. Part 4. Be a leader. Principle 1. Begin with praise and honest appreciation. Principle 2. Call attention to people's mistake indirectly. Principle 3. Talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. Principle 4. Ask questions instead of giving direct orders. Principle 5. Let the other person save face. Principle 6. Praise the slightest improvement and praise every improvement. Principle 7. Give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. Principle 8. Use encouragement. Make the fault seem easy to correct. And finally, Principle 9. Make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe. Also press on the bell notification button for more videos like these. Until next time, take care and bye.